Hey, what's up, nerds? Welcome back to Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today we're doing a little math hammer and deep dive on Puscoil Blight Lords versus Plague Drones. This is a really interesting matchup of two units that do uh, very, very similar things. So uh, I think the analysis here is really important for making that decision. Um, just a quick look at the history of these. I think the Puscoil Blight Lords really kind of got overlooked when the book was first released and the models were first released. Um, the Lord of Affliction's command ability that boosts their movement was really not that great until we got to AOS 2. Um, he needs to be your general to use that command ability, and uh, it's really only good like once or twice a game. Uh, and Nurgle really doesn't have, like, Battleshock issues. So, uh, in the old uh, AOS 1 rules, you really didn't want the Lord of Afflictions to be your general, which means you didn't get the movement bonus on the Puscoils, which means you probably didn't want to really run the Puscoils. Um, they, in general, were expensive to purchase. I believe they're about $65 for two, and they're not in uh, any sort of discounted box or anything like that. Um, the battalion that they are in is not good, and when previously they were uh, available for Plague Touched Warband, um, they were all right, but they were kind of expensive to really fit into that with all of the things that that required. Plague Drones, on the other hand, um, are really cheap. They're in the Start Collecting box. Um, Everybody already knew what they did. A lot of people already had them. They have a pretty good synergy with, uh, you know, demon-heavy armies. And the Taliban of Nurgle Battalion is a, a pretty decent choice for battalions as far as Nurgle goes. Um, so it, it seemed like drones were sort of the obvious choice. And there were a few people that uh, were running lists that... Um, kind of became known as the drone strike list where they would run a unit of six drones and run it up the board at your opponent uh, and really kind of like gum up the middle of the board and do a decent amount of damage with them. Um, and no similar list really popped up with the pus coils. So now uh, I think it's really time to make a second look at both of these. So just kind of a quick comparison of what both of them have going on. They both move 8 inches at the base. They fly, which is very powerful, and there's not a lot of things in Nurgle that fly. Um, they're both uh, units that can kind of pack a punch, um, especially when you're running uh, two, uh, like two units of them, uh, or, uh, you know, six drones or four puscoils uh they become a pretty powerful hammer unit both of them are extremely durable uh without even getting any external buffs they both have the disgusting resilience save so uh they're getting that extra five up against wounds and mortal wounds after their regular save both have a decent number of wounds on each model they both get some great benefits from offensive buffs. Um, and I, the only uh, real tweak here is that the drones are 20 points less per unit. But they're, you know, effectively about the same price. So trying to really, like, math hammer them out in that fine little difference of 20 points, I mean, they're effectively the same for list building purposes most of the time. So let's take a quick look at War Scrolls. So, a unit of drones, you get three of them in a unit for 200 points. Uh, they move eight, five up save, ten bravery, five wounds each. They fly. Their leader gets one additional attack with his plague sword. Uh, you can have an icon bearer, which uh, forces... I'm sorry, your icon bearer, if you roll a one 
in the battle shock phase, you can return a drone to the unit that has been slain. Um, and then you have bell tollers, which make your opponent reroll battle shock tests of one uh, that are within six inches. Uh, and then they have the their disgusting resilience, uh, giving them an extra five up save. And they have the Locus of Contagion. They add one to the attack's characteristic of each of its weapons when it's within seven inches of a friendly Nurgle demon hero. So looking down quickly on their attack profile, they have the Death's Head uh, shooting attack. Just a 14-inch shot. Uh, each model gets one on fours and threes. It's not super reliable, but if you're running a unit of six of these guys... You're going to punch a couple of wounds through here and there. Um, you get the Plague Sword uh, for each of the Plague Bearers that are riding atop the drones uh, with the standard uh, Plague Bearer profile. Uh, then you have the chance uh, choice rather of the Prehensal Proboscis or the Foul Mouth Parts. Uh, the Prehensal Proboscis, three attacks each, threes and fours. Uh, and the foul mouth parts, two attacks each, and threes and threes. Um, it definitely maths out better to go with the prehensile proboscis. It also looks much cooler on the model. Uh, and then all of them also get the venomous sting. Uh, just one attack each, fours and threes, one rend, and d3 damage when that gets through. Now it's important to note that this locus of contagion, because we have three different offensive weapons profiles, uh, if you have a Nurgle Demon Hero within 7 inches of your Plague Drones, you're adding 3 attacks per model. Uh, so if you're running a unit of 6 of them, just having a Nurgle Demon Hero next to them adds 18 attacks. That's kind of a lot. Um, so, on to the Puscoil Blight Lords. Um, we don't have the choice here of the prehensile proboscis or foul mouth parts. We're just forced into foul mouth parts. Um, our puscoils can fly. They move eight in comparison to the drones. They have a save of four instead of five. Uh, bravery is eight, so it's a little bit less, uh, but still a strong bravery characteristic. And seven wounds instead of five. So when you're looking at this by comparison... A unit of Puscoils has two models. A unit of Drones has three models. The unit of Puscoils has 14 wounds. The unit of Drones has 15 wounds. So defensively, they're pretty close. And that extra 4-up save rather than a 5-up, uh, I think, in general, puts these a little bit more defensively powerful. Uh, they get also get the Disgusting Resilience uh save on a five up they have the same sort of virulent discharge uh ability that your putrid blight kings have so on a, in the hero phase on a six um they'll heal three or heal i'm sorry heal d3 and on a six they'll do d3 mortal wounds to enemy units um and then you have your blighted weapons which are the same attacks as once again, your Putrid Blight Kings, when they hit on a 6, they do D6 hits instead of 1. So looking across our weapons profile, we have our Blighted Weapons that do 3 attacks each on 3s and 3s. So they're basically just a Putrid Blight King on top of a Plague Drone uh, instead of a Plague Bearer. Uh, we also have the Dolores Toxin, which can be on every other model in the... Uh, unit so half of your models can have these uh, one attack fours and threes rend two and two damage rend two being something that does not come up that often so that's pretty awesome uh, our foul mouth parts attack is uh, just the same as we have on the drones and the venomous sting is also the same so the drones themselves the foul mouth parts and the venomous sting are the same uh you also get the Dolores Toxin attack, and you basically get a Blight King on top instead of a Plague Bearer. Um, so overall, uh, both very strong, and you can see 
really why um, I think this is um, a, a big challenge. Um, one thing to note here, the drones only have the demon keyword. However, the Puscoil Blight Lords have Mortal, Demon, and Rotbringer keywords, so they can benefit from basically any buffs in Nurgle. So that's really strong. Um, definitely something to note for you going forward. So differences in offense, um, you know, as I said before, the Puscoils basically have the same attacks as Blight Kings, and the Dolores Toxin gives you access to Rend 2, although it's just one attack for every two models. Uh, the Plague Drones, uh, they have three models making attacks, so whenever you have uh, any attack buffs like the Glotkin or the Great Unclean One's command abilities, those are more potent on your drones than they are on your Puscoils. Uh, there's more attack buffs available to the drones than there are to the Puscoils because you also have the innate ability on the drones. Otherwise, the Glotkin and the Great Unclean one can buff the attacks of both units. Um, and the drones, in contrast to the Puscoils, do have uh, the 14-inch shooting attack. Again, it's a weak shooting attack, but it's a nice little tool to have sometimes, and it's not to be discounted. So the Math Hammer. Um... Your Blight Lords, uh, disregarding Rend and your opponent's saves, just on base, they're going to average doing 8 damage. Um, if you add a buff from a Great Unclean one or a Glotkin, it moves it up to 12 damage on average. For the Plague Drones, they're going to average 6 damage before saves. Uh, and without consideration to rend again, of course. If you have a nearby demon hero, that bumps it up to 10. And if you have the nearby demon hero and a great unclean one or a glotkin, it bumps that up to 14. So in order to have the offensive power of your plague drones overtake your puscoils on average, you need to have... Uh, really a double buff going on on the Plague Drones. You need that nearby demon, and you need the Great Unclean one of the Glotkin. Uh, otherwise, your Puscoils are just going to be better most of the time. Um, if you can manage a nearby demon, um, you will beat the base of the Puscoil Blight Lords without using a command point. Uh, so it's very situational here. Your damage potential is higher on the drones. Uh, your damage without any buffs is better on the Puscoils. So it's a really weird toss-up here. So some other notes here. The Puscoils get powered down dramatically when they get minus one to hit. It turns off that uh, ability, I believe it's called the Blighted Weapons, uh, that on a six to hit, they do D6 hits. That goes away when you're minus one to hit because of the way the attack is worded. So in addition to that, the Puscoils are very swingy in the amount of damage they do because of that uh, exploding six attack. It makes their top end potential really, really high. Um, and their average definitely much lower. Um, you're only throwing six of those attacks. So, uh, on a unit of two anyway. So, that uh, is pretty unreliable to try and score a, D, uh, a D6 hit along with that. Now, if you're running two units of these guys together, uh, running them four wide, um, and you're buffing them with the great unclean one, now you're throwing considerably more attacks. You're throwing, uh, what is that, uh, 16 attacks instead of the six attacks that you would otherwise get. Um, when you're throwing 16, 
your average on that is much, much more consistent. I'll tell you that a unit of five Blight Kings does 15 attacks, and they are very, very consistent on their damage. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable running Puscoils uh, in units of four uh, to make their damage really consistent and powerful. Um, the drones have a higher total number of attacks. So when you add Blades of Putrefaction to that, uh, as well as the other attack buffs that uh, can get thrown around, you have a lot more potential on B Blades of Putrefaction. Now, that is sort of a weird thing to hang your hat on since Blades of Putrefaction goes off on a 7, um, and you need a Rotbringer Wizard in order to do that. So, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's worth noting anyway. And, of course, just to mention again, the Plague Drones do have a shooting attack. Um, it's an extra attack profile. It doesn't get buffed by anything. But it's, it exists. And sometimes you can get yourself into a situation where you can be shooting over the enemy lines and uh, hitting their heroes that are hiding behind. So defensively... This is really interesting. Despite there being three models to the Plague Drones and their wound profiles being very similar, the drones actually having one extra wound in a min-sized unit, um, the overall damage absorption is much higher on the Puscoil Blight Lords because of that four-up save. Um, the five-up, five-up on the drones just leaves them really lacking and they're really, really susceptible to rend. Um, against Rend 1, the Puscoils still are saving a pretty good number of uh, wounds that are getting thrown at them. Uh, just some other defensive notes. Um, the Harbinger of Decay, because these guys are uh, mortal rot bringers, they also can benefit from the Harbinger of Decay's command ability, so they would get an extra 5-up save on top of their disgusting resilience. Um, they do also have the virulent discharge ability, which uh, allows them to once in a while heal. Um, not really reliably heal, but once in a while you'll get, uh, you know, D3 wounds back. Uh, and it also deals out some damage. On the flip side, the plague drones they do have that potential to restore models in the battle shock phase, which is a really weird, interesting ability. Um, now it's something I've only done like once or twice ever. Uh, it's really hard to do. You don't really get a lot of bites at that apple in order to try and get those models back. And you're only getting them back one at a time, but it is something that can happen. And it's again, it's worth noting. Um, and if you're running the Taliban of Nurgle Battalion, these guys heal one wound in each of your hero phases as well. Uh, it just, you know, bolsters their defense just a little bit more. Movement. Well, this is where things get really interesting. Um, so the Lord of Afflictions has a command ability that just adds eight inches to the movement of a unit of Puscoil Blight Lords. Uh, that just makes their move 16, and with the Feculent Gnarl Maw, you still get a run in charge. Um, Puscoils are everywhere you want them to be, pretty much all of the time, and they fly, so they're ignoring terrain, they're ignoring enemy units. Um, I think they're extremely, extremely mobile, and I think that really is something that puts them in a different sort of weight class compared to plague drones um now the plague drones looking at this from like an alpha strike sort of perspective um you can definitely get both of these units pretty reliably across the table and into your opponent's lines first turn I'm not really going to debate that. It's a little bit harder with the drones. It's less reliable with the drones. 
Um, they don't have the Lord of Afflictions command ability that is flinging them across the board with wild abandon. Uh, but uh, they're an eight inch move plus, you know, cycle of contagion plus the great unclean one with a bell, uh, like everything in Nurgle, uh, it all becomes surprisingly mobile. And when you're at an eight inch base and you fly, they can really get some hustle. So the plague drones are, are not, um, how do I put this exactly? They're, they're not slow. The Puscoils just can do some outrageous maneuvers. Uh, because the Lord of Affliction can just point and click and say you move 16 inches this turn. Before your run, before your charge. So, I mean, they can clear a, a big piece of the board. Get out of a combat and uh, onto an objective... Uh, charge a far away objective, uh, charge your opponent's lines, turn one. Uh, there's just a lot of versatility and possibility there. So I really like it a lot. Um, so overall, the verdict is basically that I think this is kind of a toss up and really needs play testing and uh, your own personal taste and list building to guide you. If you're going to be running a Taliban list, it's probably not a bad idea to run the drones. They fit into the Taliban and they get the extra healing off of the Taliban to make them a little bit more resilient. They both have advantages. They both have disadvantages. In the builds that I'm looking at, I really like the Puscoils a lot um, because one of a unit of four Puscoils is going to be something that hits really hard. They're incredibly resilient and they're incredibly mobile. So putting all of those things together, they're kind of a jack of all trades sort of unit and Nurgle really, really likes things that can do that. Um, however, I'm not going to discount the drones. I'm definitely going to be experimenting with drones as well. I think really what I've learned by digging down into these and doing the math hammer on them is that they're two very good, very similar units that have different advantages and different disadvantages that you're going to use in different situations. They're both very good at what they do. Um, one more quick note that um, I did not previously mention. So all of these models are on 60 millimeter round bases. That is a big base. That is a large footprint. So the added advantage, well, I'm not going to say definitively that this is an advantage. The Puscoils are going to take up a smaller footprint. Sometimes it's an advantage, sometimes it's a disadvantage. The drones are going to take up a much bigger footprint. It also has a larger number of models. So in terms of capturing objectives, you may prefer the drones because you're going to be able to get more models in with one unit most of the time. On the flip side, those Puscoils, if you're running a unit of four, they are, they're going to get themselves into places that you don't necessarily expect um, because they're just not as big. They're not as wide and they're going to be more reliably getting all of their attacks in, which is also something I really should have mentioned more over in the offensive bit. Uh, that there's a real risk that you run with drones that uh, you're just not going to get all of your drones into combat. And that can be a real problem. Uh, the Puscoils are much more likely to get all of your models into combat. And that's really good. So I think my personal preference for right now, I think, is Puscoils. But, but I have to put the caveat in here and say, I really haven't playtested this a lot yet. 
So I plan on doing a lot more playtesting with this. I think drones and Pusquails are the future of Nurgle for right now. I think that's uh, the new direction that we should be going in. Uh, running, you know, at least one decent sized unit of these guys um, to really take command of the board, have strong movement uh, and a strong hammer and anvil at the same time. Anyway, that is all for now, guys. I will see you all later. Uh, by popular demand, the next in-depth video is going to be on the Maggoth Lords, thanks to the Maggotkin Facebook group. So I'm going to start assembling my knowledge of the Maggoth Lords. I actually have one in the mail on the way from Mini Stomp right now. Um, so I will talk to all of you guys later.